I'm Chef Michael Montgomery from the Culinary School of the Rockies. In the following couple of segments, we are going to be covering some of my favorite foods, and they all pertain to brunch, just in time for Mother's Day. Um, I'm going to give you a few very classic brunch staples. Um, you can certainly tweak them at home. I'm going to give you some, I will give you some solid recipes, show you how to actually execute those recipes and be successful um, with the following items. So in the first segment, we're going to do some classic waffles and pancakes. Both of these items have buttermilk. I prefer to use buttermilk in both waffles and pancakes because number one, I like the little bit of tang that you get from the acid that's introduced to milk. And also the buttermilk, the acidity in it, actually helps to tenderize these items a little bit for you as well. So you're getting two benefits from using buttermilk. The first recipe I want to talk to you about is Belgian waffles. First and foremost, you need to make sure your waffle iron is preheating. This is a classic um, square waffle iron. It's actually not a Belgian waffle maker. Those are the round ones, and they tend to be a little deeper. This is simply the square version, more of the waffles you typically see um, every day in this country. As far as putting the batter together, very, very simple. What I have already in this bowl is two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, a little bit of sweetness. We don't want our waffles to be too sweet. Um, two tablespoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda. Those are both of our leavening agents. It's also the little bit of baking soda in there is going to help tenderize the waffles as well. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I've mixed these all together with a whisk. Instead of sifting my dry ingredients, and I typically do this here, certainly living in Colorado, flour is not holding that much moisture, so it rarely gets lumpy. Um, I just take a whisk through it. And you want to make sure you're whisking this pretty thoroughly because those leavening agents needs to, need to be distributed evenly into the flour. Once you've done that, we're going to start adding our liquid ingredients into this. So into this will go two cups of buttermilk. Make sure you shake the container um, that's holding your buttermilk before you measure it out. If you do not have buttermilk at home, you can always make it. It's really simple to do. You need to slightly heat up whole milk. If you don't have whole milk, probably don't try to make it at home. Slightly heat up whole milk in a saucepan. Add one tablespoon of lemon juice for every cup. So this is two cups. If I were to have made this, I would have added two tablespoons of lemon juice. All you're looking to do is sour the milk. I'm going to go ahead and add my buttermilk to this. I'm going to add two eggs. Before I add the eggs, I'm just going to lightly break them, whisking them just a tad. And then last but not least, I'm going to add about six tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Get in the habit of home of buying unsalted butter. As a cook, I like to season my food with my own salt. I don't want to rely on the salt already being in the butter. So just get in the habit of buying some unsalted butter. And I'm going to whisk this just until everything looks nice and uniform. Both our waffle batter and our pancake batter will have a few lumps, and that's absolutely fine. I would rather leave the lumps than overwork the flour. So keep in mind, anytime you add liquid to flour, you start to develop what is called the gluten. It's the protein in the flour. That gluten is what becomes very tough if you overwork it. So I don't want to overwork this to the point of making really tough waffles. I am just mixing at this point until everything looks nice and uniform, which it does, which what was about 30 seconds worth of mixing. At this point in time, my waffle iron is ready. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to use a half cup measure to take my batter out of the bowl and into the waffle iron. This waffle iron makes four small waffles at one time. So I'm going to make, you know, pour about half a cup worth of batter into each mold. And hopefully, this will work for us and be the correct size waffle and not just squeeze out the sides. Again, make sure your iron is preheated. If it does not look nice and, hate to use the word, greasy, but if it doesn't look shiny in there, um, make sure you give it some cooking spray, or you could lightly butter it. Um, with a brush and some butter. 
we're going to let these go. The first thing I do to, deter to determine doneness is use my nose. When things start smelling like waffles, they're most likely ready to go. The nice thing about this iron is there heat, there's heat coming from the bottom and the top, so I don't have to worry about flipping anything. It does all the work for me. When I start to smell waffles, I'll lift the lid gently and make sure I don't have any sticking, and they should be nice, golden brown, and crisp. So it's been about three minutes. First thing, like I said, we're going to use our nose to determine when the waffles are, waffles are done, and I most definitely do smell waffles. Let's lift up the iron and see what's happening. They've actually stuck to the lid, which is fine. You usually can work them off, regardless of what side they are stuck on. And they look beautiful. The nice thing about this waffle recipe is it should give you a nice amount of loft. So you're going to have a crisp edge on your waffles and then a nice amount of loft or rise from those leavening agents that I was talking about. So we've got four beautifully cooked waffles ready to go. You could at this point top it with simply maple syrup. You could either um, do that or make a compote, which I'll be showing you um, coming up in the next segment. Classic waffles, nothing like pleasing your mom with a plate of these on Mother's Day.